Hey, hello everybody. Thanks for coming to this week's video blog. My name is Robert Rico. So glad to see you. Hey, listen, today we're going to be discussing the difference. Yeah, that's right. I said it. The difference between the primary mortgage market and the secondary mortgage market. A lot of us get confused when it comes to those two items. Stay tuned. Let me clear it up. See you soon. All right, hey, listen, when it comes to real estate terminology, a lot of it can be confusing. But allow me to clarify this next topic, the primary mortgage market versus the secondary mortgage market. Completely different items, and I want you to make sure you're crystal clear when it comes to both. Ready? Let's start off with the primary mortgage market. What is the primary mortgage market? This is one of my favorite topics because it's pretty simple. When it comes to the primary mortgage market, I want you to think a cup of coffee, yeah? I want you to think a cup of coffee. A lender is where we go as buyers, when somebody wants to buy a house, to go get a loan, right? The majority of your buyers will not have cash to go buy a house. Boom, here's $500,000. Boom, here's a million dollars. Boom, here's $1.5 million. It typically requires, it typically requires the services of a lender, the money from the lender, right? So the buyer goes and pays the visit to the lender. They say, you know what, honey, get in the car, let's go, let's go talk to a lender who may be able to help us get approved for a loan. So they go to the lender's office and they sit there and the lender asks them a bunch of questions. They ask them, hey, where have you worked the past several years? What's your income look like? Let's run your credit score. They ask them a whole bunch of qualifying questions for this loan. You with me? And while they're sitting there, they're jibber jabbering and they're talking and they're discussing, hey, how's your wife and kids? Hey, that's a nice tie you're wearing there. Hey, uh, would you mind giving me a cup of coffee? Sure, here's a cup of coffee. Let's chit chat here. So that cup of coffee is extremely crucial in my opinion because it allows us to get to know each other, not just on a personal level, but that cup of coffee allows us to get to know each other on a financial level, meaning are you going to qualify for a loan? It's a great way to spend some time with somebody at that cup of coffee. And the primary mortgage market, ladies and gentlemen, that's what it is. The primary mortgage market is where lenders qualify a buyer. It's where loans are originated, where loans are originated. Somebody sits in front of a lender, a, a, an actual person, and says, hey, how's the wife and kids? Hey, how are you doing? Hey, you want a cup of coffee? Sure, I'll take a cup. Oh, this is a good cup of coffee. If it weren't for that first meeting with the lender, there would be no origination of the loan for your buyer. There'd be no processing of the loan for your buyer. There'd be no funding for that loan for your buyer, and your buyer wouldn't be able to purchase a home. So is the primary mortgage market important? Absolutely. Now, what happens at the secondary mortgage market? Complete different story. The minute your borrower signs the loan documents, particularly the promissory note, and he says, I promise to pay you back, Mr. Lender. I promise to pay you back 5,000 bucks a month at 3.5% interest rate for the next 30 years. That's written in stone, man, on that promissory note. Boom, right there. They file that away. The lender will file it away, man. And that's good as gold. It'll never change if it's a fixed rate. That's put away. Never changes, written in stone. The lender's job is to make money. Let's get that straight. Lenders want to make money to a whole bunch of buyers, to a whole bunch of borrowers, people who qualify for a loan. And they go to their vault and they say, you know what, Mr. Borrower, who's sitting right there in front of them, who's drinking that nice cup of coffee, we would love to lend you a million bucks. You qualify. Looks like you have some great history with your employment. Looks like, looks like you have some great reserves in the bank. We dig you, we want to give you a million bucks. And they do that all day long, every day of the week. Well, except weekends probably. Maybe on Saturdays too, I don't know. But they do that all the time. They do it often. Well, eventually that, that vault of theirs full of money runs out. And what happens is that the lender's job, the way the lender makes money, the way the lenders create revenue is they charge the borrower, buyer, who's sitting there drinking that cup of coffee, they charge them what's called points. Aside from other fees, they charge them points. The, the lenders will charge you one point, maybe two, but typically one point. One point typically is 1%. Don't let me lose you. Let's assume the lender charges one point, 1% 1 of the loan amount. Well, one point, 1% 1 of a $1 million loan is $10,000. You got it? Nice and easy. Of a $2 million loan, that would be $20,000. So the lender says, Mr. Borrower, Mr. Buyer, you qualify for the loan, sign these loan documents. Just as a reminder, we'll be charging you points. Don't forget to drop off your check at, 
you know, at escrow and yada, 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 that $10,000 or that $20,000, whatever the amount is for the points. We close a deal. Lender gives them the money. That's called funding. Buyer buys the house. But it costs the buyer. And I'm not talking about long-term interest, that 3.5%. We're talking upfront fees right now. Boom. We want one point from the buyer borrower. That's very common. Very common. You got it? So... The lender makes money, not just in the long term of that 30-year note. They make upfront money, man. They make upfront like, hey, the minute you know, we close this deal, we want you to pay us 10000 bucks, 20000 bucks, whatever the amount is for that one point. And that's how lenders make immediate profit. Boom, right off the bat. It's a great business for lenders because now they've just charged an amount of money and they still have collateral in this house. That million dollar they lent out, yeah. They got collateral in there because if the borrower doesn't make the payments, as per that promissory note that they promised, remember the borrower said, hey, I promise to pay you back blank amount of you know, 5,000 bucks a month for the next 30 years. If they don't comply with these instructions there with this promissory note, the lender can do what? Yeah, foreclose on them and take the house back. So the lender's in a good situation here. The lender is what we call the beneficiary of that loan, man, because they're going to benefit one way or the other, right? Well, eventually, in many cases, the lender runs out of money in that vault. And they say, oh, man, hey, boss, they huddle up. Hey, boss, let's huddle up. And they huddle up. All the people at the, at the lender's office huddle up and they say, hey, we got a problem, man. There's no more money to lend out. Lender says, I have an idea. Let's go over to the secondary mortgage market and sell some of these notes, some of these loans that we have filed away. Let's sell them because these are worth something, man. These notes... These promissory notes, these loans, they're worth money. They're worth something. These are negotiable. We can take this note here that's worth a million bucks. Remember, we lend somebody a million dollars that's attached to a property. Let's get rid of it. Let's sell it. The lender goes in what they call bundle. The lender goes to their files and they bundle a whole bunch of notes. Now, typically, these notes are very similar. Same amount of loan amounts, same interest rate. Boom. Bundle them together and they, they send somebody over to the Secondary mortgage market. I'm going to paint the picture. Let me paint the picture. So let's just assume somebody says, well, you know what, guys? I'll go down there. I'll see if I can get rid of these, if I can get rid of these notes. I'll see if I can sell these notes off at the secondary mortgage market. So this particular individual packages them up, puts them in the trunk of his car, and he drives downtown, right? He's driving to downtown. And as soon as he gets to downtown, there's this big building. I'm just painting the picture, giving you an example. There's this big building, the neon lights, and it says... Secondary mortgage market, secondary mortgage market, secondary mortgage market. And he says, here's the place I just got here. I can't believe I did it. Goes to the trunk, pulls out the bundle of notes, walks into this, this mysterious building that says secondary mortgage market, opens the door, walks in, and there's a big smoky room, like a pool hall. Ever been to a pool hall? And you got this lender representative in there with the bundle of bundle of notes in there that got value. Remember that? And he sees a table in the back, their village table, and there's three people back there playing pool, right? And he says, yo, Fanny, yo, Freddie, yo, Ginny. It's Fanny Mae, Freddie Mac, and Ginny Mae. Now, these are the three biggest investors who are willing to buy these notes, man. Freddie Mac, Fanny Mae, and Ginny Mae. And they're back there playing pool. And the lender representative says, yo, Freddie. Nice shot. Hey, listen, I got a whole bunch of loans here. I was wondering if you wanted to buy them off of us at this resale marketplace in this smoky room called the secondary mortgage market, right? The smoky room, the secondary mortgage market. Three pool players, Fanny, Freddie, and Ginny Mae. And Freddie says, yeah, I'll leave him up there at the bar. I'll leave him, leave the batch there. I'll, uh, I'll wire you the money tomorrow or whatnot. We'll make arrangements to get that money over to you. We appreciate it. See you soon. And he does. The lender rep leaves him there at the bar, takes off, goes back to the bank, and says, hey, bank. Hey, guys, great news. I was able to sell it off over the second-day mortgage market. They're going to wire us all that money. We'll be back in business before you know it. That vault will be full of money. We can lend out more money to new buyers. Lend out new money to new borrowers and we're happy as can be. Now these notes that are sold in that smoky room at that secondary mortgage market, don't forget, 
nothing on them changes. These documents, these promissory notes, nothing on them changes. Especially if they're fixed because a deal is a deal when it was initially signed by the borrower. When the borrower signed that note and said, I promise to pay you back 5,000 bucks for the next 30 years at 3.5% fixed interest rate, boom, there it is. It doesn't matter who's holding this note, whether it's this guy, this guy, or this guy, it stays the same because a deal is a deal is a deal. You got it? Ladies and gentlemen, cup of coffee, primary mortgage market. Smoky room, secondary mortgage market. Hope this helps you out. Primary mortgage market, secondary mortgage market, you got this. Hope to see you next week. Stay safe. Have a great one.